Whether it's to build a passive income or to escape the nine to five rat race, more and more people across the UK are turning to property investing and development as a way of making money work for them, not for them working for money. It sounds easy, but property is not a game for the faint-hearted, with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake. The rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very, very wrong. You often need financial experience and knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where we come in. In this series, we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals. John Howard, Helen Chorley, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork and Ranjan Bhattacharya, or who we call our property investment angels. Our contestants are in with the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who will bring both finance and experience to the deal. Will our angels be sending them up to the penthouse or will they be heading straight for the basement? I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you're watching Property Elevator. So we're here in sunny Hertfordshire for episode one, season two of Property Elevator. Our angels are ready and our pitches are starting to arrive. There's a few nerves around, but mainly a lot of excitement. Let's see how they get on. I've got a feeling you're going to enjoy this first one. I don't personally think you should come in here and uh, be as ballsy as you've been, Matthew. It's probably worth giving us all a pack before you present. And why do you think you can get planning permission where they, they haven't done? With 315,000 in cash, you can easily fund this deal with a, a land and development loan. I always like to get behind the story, particularly if it's a half done project, and to find out exactly the reasons why it's changed hands so many times. Okay, Bobby, welcome to Property Elevator. It's lovely having you. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Um, I'm based in Birmingham in the Midlands okay. um, and I've already got a portfolio of HMO properties and that's what I do mainly, so buy to let and HMO. Okay, so they're kind of your main two strategies? That's my main two strategies, yeah. So I've been Great. a, a full-time teacher for 15 years, okay. um, but I've been building up the property alongside, but only this year I've left um, and so full -time. gone full-time in, in wow. looking after my portfolio pretty much. The deal today um, is um, it's actually a pub. It's a pub based in the Midlands. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's on the market currently. There's only half a building really, so it's a bit of a development project. Right. Um, but it's also got planning permission for 13 bedrooms, um, so HMO type thing. So yeah. I'm trying to step out of the HMO in terms of houses and trying to move into probably into a bit more commercial, residential type setup. Excellent. And what numbers are you looking at from the angels? All the money really, all the money if possible. <laughs> as much as I can get. As much as I can get, yeah. <laughs> so all the money. So we're looking at probably 300,000 is roughly the, the purchase price mm -hmm. and about 300,000 uh, 300, to to develop. Brilliant. So 600,000 in total. Good, great, um, So right. see if they give it me. Well, best of luck. <laughs> Thank you. Bobby's coming in to see us and uh, he is purchasing a pub to convert into an HMO. It looks like it's a bit of a challenge. What's left of the pub? Or what's left of the pub. So uh, should we get him in and see what he has to say? My name's Bobby, um, um, I live in Birmingham, um, live and invest in Birmingham, have done for a number of years. I've got a small property portfolio at the moment um, of mainly HMOs, but I've also been a full-time teacher at the same time. So uh, for 15 years I've taught in secondary schools um, in the Midlands, um, but this year was my, my year to step out. Knowing what I know now with COVID, maybe weren't the best idea, but it's, it's, it's done and, um, and, I, and I'm out. The deal that I'm looking for investment for today is a pub based in the Midlands. Because most of my stuff is mainly HMO and I tend to buy, buy stuff with you know, the traditional, buy it with my own money and then, and then turn it into, into yep. HMO and then, and then rent it out. Um, this is new for me, so I, I've not done anything commercial. And it's actually, it's actually one of Ranjan's um, YouTube videos and I've, we've had a bit of um, emails oh, back. Not that and Ranjan yeah. again. I'll tell you yeah. what, if we um, hear about his YouTube anymore. It, it was actually only the last three out. months. It's actually one of those videos that how it's one of the ones I did with Simon Zushi um, oh, and the commercial stuff. So did that inspire you? It, it That's actually, amazing. Yeah, no believe it or not, that. it did. It inspired me in the sense that actually commercial in the space that it's in at the minute with the planning laws yes. changing and being so, so you know, slightly laxed. This seemed a bit, of, a bit more, so I've been looking. So post video, I was, I was just looking at more options like yes. this. 
and I'm getting a lot of them coming my way. So this is one that I was interested in. The purchase price for this is currently under offer, but the agent have told me that a purchase price of £325,000 would secure it. One conservative builder estimate um, estimates about £300,000 to, yep. to get it up and running. And then, yeah, the post that, we're looking at about £80,000, £82,000 sort of net sort of rental income with a net profit of about £40,000. Monthly net income, about £4,000 a month. On the sheet that I've given you, it's three and a half thousand pound, but that's that's because I've I've included voids and, and repairs. Very sensible. Um, okay. But I think once it's fully lit, it'll be four thousand two hundred pound um, net profit per month. Three hundred twenty-five thousand for for the relatively rundown. Yeah. Pub. Yeah. <laughs> we were just commenting there hasn't been a pint sunk in there for a while. I think, well, what's happened is... There was a keg of beer, though. There was some so. kegs of beer, yeah. And you get that free beer with it. Um, I'm thinking you do, yeah. I'm in. Uh, <laughs> it's, fa it's fairly run down. And what's happened is, in the last three years, so I've been watching the pub for a while, but not really thinking about it as a, as a project, um, a pub has opened up across the road, so, and that's become a proper pub. The change of use, I'm hoping, with the, with the planning laws, we could use the commercial space downstairs for something else. And probably not wise to use a pub, but now there's a, an established pub across the road. The three tw so you said it's under offer, the 325 would secure it. W would it be subject to planning? No, it's already got planning permission oh, sorry, approved. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay, it's got planning approved uh, for 13 bedrooms. And you know the, uh, the area, the, the rent? I know the area, yeah, pretty well. Yeah, okay, so the rents stack up, that's... that's the that's rents, I think they're conservative because they, they've got en-suites all built in as well, into the, into the rooms, into the plans. Um, I think 450 is a, is a good price, but I think we'll probably be able to push for £500 per, per room for the, for the double rooms. And the cost of the reefer, where, where have they come from? The builder that come and looked at it, um, and he said that uh, we're looking approximately um, around the £300,000 mark. But because I've never done anything of this size, I'm just thinking, well, you know, I probably should have got a few more quotes, and that's something I can go back and do definitely. But, but you made a start, Bobby, and, and you've got to start somewhere, and I, 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 don't, I don't think, I think that's fine, you know, you, you've got a, a, a guesstimate, if you like, yeah, and then, I, then yeah. if it looks like it works on the guesstimate, then I, what I normally do is then I, I, you know, I then drill down further. What's the story behind this? I mean, the previous owner started the project and I has think not it's, finished. Um, I think it's changed a few hands um, and I think people are starting the project and they just can't afford to finish it. I think this project, only because I was looking at the council documents, I think he actually carries the same surname as me, but I've, I've no, no idea of who the guy is. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think he's bought the pub, he's literally just got the planning permission, it was granted on the 13th of July, just gone. He originally put it in for 14 bedroom um, and that was rejected and they said, look, we want it to be 13 bedrooms, we want you to introduce another communal space on the middle floor. I think we could probably get another four bedrooms out of it. But that's all. That's all. Maybe in the pipeline. Exactly. That, that, yeah. That, that, that's that's a that's a potential. But that's um, just a bonus, isn't it? I think it's changed hands because everyone who buys it realizes it's going to cost an awful lot more to do. Yeah. And it won't make any money, and that's why they leave it. Yeah. Or they have got the money to do it. Yeah. One of the two. One of the two. Yeah. Yeah. And you can always finance development work. If you own the site, you can finance 100% of the development cost. So I'm not yeah. sure that that's 100% correct, unless they're highly unfinanceable. Um, I think. You know, from my experience, you know, 14 beds, it's 300 grand with a site that's that derelict. It's almost derelict. I mean, mm. the roof is off, the walls are off, the, walls are off. the internal shots, you're down to ground level. Yes. So you need to underpin those walls, screed floors. Uh, I mean, this is a serious amount of work for the size of the property. Mm. My gut feeling would be that that's, that's really light on the, on the conversion work. That would be my intuitive feel as well. You know, we've, we've got a good look at the pictures there. It's certainly a big job and you know, somebody has started it. Like you've got the guide and I agree with John, you have to go away and get kind of a couple of other builder quotes as well. But what you also need to remember is to, and be wary of is if they price for the job and then all the kind of the additionals get stacked Extras on later. On, yeah. What you also wish you probably, I don't know, maybe you have, maybe you haven't got in there is a contingency because I'd want a hell of a contingency on that. Mm. Yeah, you've, you've done yeah. the right thing so far. Yeah. But there's an awful lot more analysis yeah, needed think, on the bill costs. There's a there? little bit of Captain Cautious going on here on my right, on my <laughs> right hand side. I'm I have to say, gonna... Bobby, I, I, I personally, what, the one thing I would say is when a property has been exposed to the elements like that, mm. even though some of the work has been done, there's some new joists in there and so on, you have to be wary that some of the work that's been done may have to come out because it's, been, it's, it's deteriorated because of the weather that's got to it. I personally think it's a very ambitious scheme for someone who, who's, who uh, by your own admission, you've been pretty steady and safe up to now. You're a school teacher, all due respect, very intelligent. So you've probably been on the safer side of life rather than the 
with more the residential sides, yeah. Residential, I've, yeah. I've done loads. Of, I've done refurbs and stuff. Yeah, this exactly. Is, this is a different league. This is a this is a really big step up, uh, and and someone with my even my ex experience would be looking at that and thinking, Phew, you know, I, I need to be on I need to be on my A game for this, yeah. um, and I think personally I would be looking for a slightly less ambitious scheme to do as your next step up. I think you've gone from, out of 10, you've gone from being at, at four out of 10 speed-wise to probably nine. This is a distressed asset, and I don't see it as a distressed price. And, and that should be sort of factored in majorly. The other thing is, I, I always like to get behind the story, particularly if it's a half-done project, and to find out exactly the reasons why it's changed hands so many times. If you're gonna take on a project for learning or whatever, make it be something that is worthwhile and really packs a punch and gives yeah. you something over and above what just buying three or four houses to get the same number of rooms added to the portfolio. I think it'd also be interesting to try to find out what the previous owner paid for it prior to planning, because you don't really want to be on the back end of his uplift. Yeah. Um, and uh, if the guys are right, he's got this planning, tried to do it and walked away because it's not viable. Then, then you're the loser in that game. Bobby, I wouldn't agree with that entirely, and I'll tell you why. Because in 1990, I bought 360 flats in West Brom. Two, 280 of them had been bought six months earlier off Sam Logistic Council for 75,000 each the block. And I gave the guy 1.55 million for those two blocks six months later. Best deal he's ever done, and one of the best deals I've ever done. So never worry about what someone's paid for a, pro for a property. It's irrelevant. If you're confident about what you can do with that property, good luck to them if they've got there before you yeah. and so on. But for me, this one's a bit too ambitious. However, I would like to keep in touch with you because I do, I do deals in, West, in the West Bromwich area and the Birmingham area and I think uh, we can do something together going forward. There's lots of stuff coming my way at the minute so there's definitely, well, I'd definitely love to keep in touch. Yeah, no doubt. We, we will. Don't you worry about that. Just one thing on that though, I think you always certainly, when things come across my desk, I always have to ask, why me? Why is it coming to me? Because if it's been past Paul's, Ranjan's, John's, Nicholas's desk, and then it ends at mine, I'm probably not interested. So just have a little bit of, yes, we are the Captain Cautious kind of side here, but just have a little bit of, why has it come to you? But also, I suppose, with the new planning changes, I don't quite know with some of these buildings what I would be able to do with them, and I don't think anyone really knows what they can do with them. Oh, I think, yeah, and I think, I think you're right. And that's where I'm trying to get first in and mm. just try and make yeah. those moves because people... You're, listen, you're very investable. You're bright, you're intelligent, you're decent and you're investable and that's really important and, and like this is yeah. this is ticking my this spreadsheet with the numbers with oh, the breakdowns i mean that's yeah. that's ticking all my boxes yeah, Helen, Helen will love your return that. on gdv return yeah. on cost that's all nice yeah. if those numbers oh, are correct. those numbers yeah. and that's where the risk is for me so yeah. it's not for me but great work and, and with john you're very investable thank you Keep thank going. you very much nicholas i think it's it's too risky i think it's too much work i think it's it's probably not going to be viable but as you know, echo what the guys have said, you're highly investable. Thank you. If you'd brought a pub that didn't need all those external works, and it was just reconfiguration and yeah. fire regulations to get it to the right HMO status, I'd have been very interested. So it's not the deal. You would be. So good luck for the future. Thank you. And yeah, Thank stay you. in touch with us and no see problem, what we can do definitely. in the future. Ranjan? Um, again, the same for me. It's not, not for me, but I'd just like to you know, keep in touch and all the rest of it. But He's I keeping in touch with me, Ranjan, well, not yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the comment I'd like to kind of make, do bear in mind what I said earlier about I'm not convinced that this is priced at a distressed asset rate. So under the new rules that are coming out, you know, there's, there's limited value, there's a limited premium to something that has that sort of permission, which you're paying for now. Yes, that, um, that is a very, so, so very just bear good. that in mind as well. Uh, yeah, look, I think similar to the other guys, I like Birmingham. I've just bought a few properties in Birmingham. Our clients have bought a few hundred over the past year or so. Um, I'd like to keep in touch, you know, maybe something slightly more central to the city in Birmingham. Yeah, I'd be really in interested. John and I. I've told you, he's only keeping in touch uh, with me. And, and I think I could add value to you there, certainly from a, a marketing, sales and layout perspective. Thank you, yeah. Um, so help. keep in touch, but again, I don't think this particular deal is... No, that's fine. Bobby, thank you very much for making the thank effort you, to come John. today, and I'm sure we'll be doing business in the future. Thank you. OK, so Bobby, unfortunately, we didn't get a deal. No, not today. What not happened? Today. What did they say? Um, I think it was um, a bit too ambitious. Um, I think they're looking at the building, and because it's half, it's, it's a derelict building effectively. I think they thought that um, it would be too risky for them. But they've also said that um, to keep their numbers and to keep their cards and 
they certainly want to keep in contact with any future deals that come through, which is great news for me. Brilliant. So that's really positive. Yeah. Great uh, news. What do you feel now about the deal? Are you going to um, still consider it? I, I think I'm going to try and get the deal at a lower price. Okay. Because I think that's what they were saying. They were saying it's not derelict value. It's it's kind of a good value because they've got planning permission. Okay. So, so go back, work on your numbers. And definitely. Then well, just put, put an there. offer in and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, so we have father, daughter, James and Olivia with us. It's great to have you both. Hi. Thank you for coming to Property <laughs> Elevator today. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the deal and what you're after from the Angels today. Yeah, absolutely. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's a, a one bedroom maisonette in Crawley. that has been on the market since December. Mm -hmm. um, it's a repossession. It's, it's a bit dated, but the main reason it hadn't sold so far is got a short lease, 67 years left, right. unexpired, which people start to shy away from leases below 80 years, as yep. I'm sure you know. Yep. Um, we've been told by the agent it's on the market for 100 and just under 150,000. Right. The agent has intimated to us that we could pick it up for 130, maybe a bit less than that. So what we're looking for today, uh, and the main reason is to get my daughter on the property ladder. Uh, nice. She's. Um, I'm a qualified nursery practitioner. Okay. So early years. Yeah. Like with little children. Lovely. Hence the uniform. Yeah. <laughs> so you want a little bit of passive income yeah. as well on the exactly. side. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, it's a lovely job, but obviously it doesn't pay a great deal. So yeah. what we're hoping to do is get Olivia on the property ladder today with some help from the investors. Okay. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Uh, and I'll chat to you when you get out. Fingers Thank crossed. You. Perfect. Thank right. you. Thank you. We've got the Burt family coming in and this is a property in Crawley, it's a, a one bedroom masonette I think. I think they're getting a lease extension as well, it's nice that um, uh, a father and daughter are coming in together. Uh, my name is James, um, I'm a uh, retail property consultant, so I do work in property but on the commercial side of things. This is my daughter Olivia. Hiya, um, Hi, I'm Olivia. a qualified early years educator, so nothing to do with property but hoping to get my way onto the property ladder with my father to help me yeah. and hopefully you guys as well. Uh, and, that, and that's the basic um, reason we're here today. So we've identified a property in Crawley, a, a one bedroom maisonette. Uh, it's been on the market since December. Uh, it's a repossession. Uh, it hasn't sold for a couple of re main reasons. One being it's got a short lease, the lease only got 67 years left to go. And it's also looking pretty tired as you can see from the photographs. It's on the market for just under 150,000. Um, the agent marketing has suggested to us that we could pick it up for 130, maybe a bit less than that. The expectation is if we're able to do that, re renew the lease, spend probably about 10,000 refurbishing the property, there should be a, something, like, something like a 20,000 pound mortgage, uh, profit in that if and when we came to sell. I mean, the intention isn't to sell, but once the, the lease is extended, property done up, then remortgage, and then give any monies that um, we're able to, to refund the angel investors. What we're looking to achieve from, from you guys is a £40,000 injection of cash, which would be the 25% deposit for the mortgage, along with £10,000 towards doing the property up and renovating it. Very good. As I would expect from a professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's very so, kind. Nicholas, would you like to kick us off? Uh, you said the end value is 180, was it? Okay, so, uh, and spending sort of 10 on it, so about 40 grand. We've got, the lease, we've got the lease renewal as well. And the lease, lease renewal as well, yeah, yeah, okay, so maybe not quite that much. Okay, so we'd need to leave a bit of money in to get the capital growth over time as well, yeah. potentially. So expected purchase price is 130. That's right. Yeah, your lease extension, 18 to 19. Probably 20 with fees, yeah. Okay, and then 10 refurb. Okay, so 160 all-in costs and GDB, you're expecting of 180. Okay, so that's, that's where your 20k profit is coming from. I'm just wondering about the um, kind of what are your, your comparables for working out the, the net income? Um, I've got a couple of flats um, in that vicinity, one right. in Crawley, one in Horsham, which I let out. So I've got a pretty good feel for the sort of rental income you can expect. Okay. To make the, the, the deal work with an investor, I'd be probably be going in a bit harder on the value, given the, the quality of what the sort the, of what, what I'd rather. The, um, what it's in and also the short lease. Deliver, so. <laughs> yeah, so I'd be going in a bit harder on that, trying to build a little bit more equity into it. It says cash buyers only yep. on the ad. Is that just because of the lease? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes that can be a red flag mm. um, because they don't want surveys done. But, but it probably is just because of the lease in this case. It, it seems maybe the works are a little bit light 
on cost, um, just based from my own experience? Mm. Uh, do you, what, what, are they, what are they based on? Um, personal experience, to be honest with you, and the fact that uh, you know, we're pretty hands-on. Um, so we do, you know, not the, the I mean, work yourself. Uh, yeah. Olivia's boyfriend's electrician, for instance. Okay. You know, we're pretty handy you with paintbrush. You want to keep him going for a while. Yeah. At least you've done five deals. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minimum of five deals. Yeah, I suppose my main concern about the works being a little bit light on and the current purchase value is, you know, to replace a bathroom and kitchen and, and, and the, the carpets and, a, a, you know, paint and that sort of thing, I would have thought it'd be more like ten to 15,000, which almost wipes out your profit. One thing I'm concerned about is the lease extension costs. Um, how do you know that it's 20,500? Because a concern for me is why hasn't the vendor already extended it or arranged well, it first? It, as it's a repossession, Oh I, right. I, can't, I can't get a, a transfer of, yeah, of, of yeah. that of that ability to extend the lease. So, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to wait for two years before I can renew the lease. So, so that's why I've taken a sort of more long-term view. Yeah. Um, if we're able to get a, a better mortgage product, obviously we'll, we'll pursue that. I mean, that's something that's certainly worth having a look at. Um, but the other aspect of the matter is that yeah, we, we, in terms of the figure, the £20,000, that was literally just putting, putting the numbers into um, the lease advisory uh, website, which I th in the pamphlet you've got yes. there, you've got, a, you've got those oh, figures yeah, there. Yeah. I, I mean, that's generally a little bit of a concern because it all depends on whether the freeholder is willing to sell it. If they are not, then you can end up paying a lot of legal costs and surveying costs because they can request a valuation done mm -hmm. and these costs can easily go up. It depends on whether, the, if the freeholder is not willing, okay. the cost of that can go up. That's quite a very well. good point. You've really got to sweat this deal more, Olivia. So you've got to work harder at it, because at the moment it's it's not really good enough. Even uh, and say so even for you, that's I don't mean that derogatory. It's certainly not good enough for us. I don't think. Maybe one of us will step up, but you need to just sweat it harder, get a better deal out of it. Uh, and the basics you've done are good and they're right. So really what you need to do now, I think personally, is go back, um, try and get it for 125. Do you know who the freeholder is? No. Okay, because that, that's like Ranjan says, that is an issue. I would have thought 20,000 to renew this is a bit heavy because we, we own a lot of freeholds and so all the time we're getting people asking us, can we renew the, you know, the, the leases and so on. And I would have thought for so, uh, something on a value of 125, 130, um, I'd have thought 20,000 is, is a bit steep. It should be a bit less than that probably. You might negotiate that down. Um, In all these figures I've been realistic, uh, erring on the side of caution. No, well, you've done the, just the right thing. I completely agree with you on that. You, you know, you've, you, you've come in here in, in the right manner, in the right way. I just think that, um, certainly for me, if we start off with me, I just don't think there's really enough meat in it for me to invest this time. However, what I would say is, you're on the right lines, you just need to be a bit greedier and, and try and, and, and widen that gap between what you're paying for it and what it's going to be worth when it's done. But I just think for me, you know, if you came here with uh, saying the house is, there's a house and there's three flats, then, then I would have been more interested than I would with just the one. I think you've just been a little bit too cautious. Yeah, I fully accept the fact it's a, it's a pretty simple yeah. um, oven-ready yeah. deal. And, and, and that's great because um, if, if you're not successful today, I'm sure you're going to help a living, put the money in for her, and she'll be doing <laughs> it anyway. <laughs> so, okay. so that's great. I said and, I wouldn't and, be here. On, <laughs> on, that basis, on that basis, it's the right one to do. But for us, for me, I can't talk for the others, but for me, it's just not really big enough today. Okay, thank you. For me, um, I think you're making a mistake that a lot of, a lot of investors make. They, they invest, or they look to invest with their heart rather than their head. And I think you're looking for a home for Olivia and a way to get her into her first home rather than helping her with an investment that makes money that she can then use that money to take the deposit to buy the home she wants. That would be my approach. So I'd, I'd forget about living in this one. Um, uh, you might not have the right deal here because of the lease extension complications, cost uncertainty. Look for a simpler deal that you can go and make 20 or 30 grand out of flip that deal within six months and then use that deposit to go and buy your home. I don't think she can uh, buy a simpler deal. 
very well, simple. this is complicated because it's got a lease extension. You don't know what that cost that's is going to be. That's the margin, the lease, ex lease extension. If there's problems, that's where you make your margins, on the problems. So of course, I, of I course. tend to disagree with Nicholas on this, surprisingly. Well, maybe think bigger then is maybe what I yeah, mean I as think, well. I think, you know, yeah, I, I would agree with you. A think slightly bigger think property. Bigger. Yeah. We might have been able to invest in it. Yeah. Forget about living in it because you, you don't want to buy a four bed house to live in, but it might have had enough margin for us to be yeah, interested that's fair for comment. you to make fair some comment. money when you sell it and then you can go and buy your home. Yeah. Or do another couple of deals. You know, I'd say forget about buying your home for now. Yeah. Do three or four deals, make a hundred grand. Live at home, it's the cheapest <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> Live at home, yeah. pay no rent, <laughs> get free food and laundry. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> why, why move? <laughs> The problem is we live in you know, a nice area in Twickenham and for I'm getting, sure anything you around, <laughs> getting anything around there is, is just an arm and a leg. Yeah, and so I um, so to, to try and get to live on the ladder, she's having to look in. Oh, the, I understand um, that. And, and she's doing just the right thing in that areas. respect. Helen? Um, I do think you're on the right lines. I like that you have been conservative in your approach. I'd rather see that than somebody kind of you know, coming with inflated figures and trying to do something beyond their means, albeit with the guidance that you've got, which is absolutely invaluable, and with Nicholas, that I actually think you could do something a little bit bigger. Um, the yield and the kind of time frame don't work for me, but I can really see that this is going to be the start of something for you, so I really wish you well, and, and you know, you're, you, you're both, you're sensible, you're investable, you're looking at the right things, you know, you've presented it, you know, got kind of all the numbers, so... Um, find something bigger and come back next time. <laughs> I started in just out of university. I had five investment properties before, while living at home with mum and dad. <laughs> just turn them over, generate the cash flow, then go for. Uh, so I think that's it. and to do that, you really need quicker deals that you can just just turn around quickly, get your money out, get your cash pot before then going in. So it's like um, I think you're, you're playing golf and trying to do a hole in one. <laughs> uh, take a few shots to get it. Uh, in the in the hole, I, I love problems where I know I can fix them with absolute certainty. Yeah. And for here, because I am a freeholder and I get a lot of people wanting to extend their lease and all and buy the lease, and I know what I can do if I'm unwilling to sell the freehold to slow the process up. Um, and if the freehold is not willing, and you haven't had a talk to the freeholder first, then the cost and the time can go up dramatically to secure that extension before you're able to remortgage it and all the rest of it. it That's it, the thing. It can, Ranjan, but, but normally if you say to a freeholder and you and I and others sitting around here, freeholders, you know, all, all these, you know, here's 18 grand, you know, oh great, can you send it next week? We'll get it signed. You know, so it, it, on the whole people are, are, are fairly positive about it. And actually, if this freeholder was on the ball, mm -hmm. they would be buying the, the property <laughs> off. The, That's you know, a fair point. They'd be buying the property refer because they can add that extra value themselves for nothing. So you know, probably you'll be okay, but I would always find out who the freeholder yes, is yes. before you commit. Right, okay. So you know, and you've spoken to them, and you know, they sound decent, or they sound like they're gonna be a lot of hassle, then maybe walk away. Mm, but yes, also, good advice. you know, information, you know, knowledge is power. Yes. Um, so I suppose just to echo some of the things that have already been said and add my own little touch to it. First off, I agree with what Nick said. If, if, if you were thinking about this being your home at some point, get that out of your head completely. Investing and personal preferences should be completely separate. Investing should be unemotional, commercially minded, and your, you know, your home is a personal decision and you should be trying to make the money to buy the home and make the personal decision. Um, with regards to the deal, I think it's something that maybe could work if you were doing it on your own. I don't necessarily think it works bringing an investor in because the margin's not big enough. Uh, if it was me doing it and it was a lease extension and a refurb, I would want a much bigger margin than 7%. I'd be aiming for 20 to 30% because things are going to probably come up and cost you extra money than, than what you expected. So that's my take on it and for that reason it's not for me. So thank you very much for coming today. No, thank, thank you. For you. Listening to us. <laughs> this is just the start. You've got a great mentor yeah. and yes. a great financier as well. <laughs> <probably. If only. laughs> so don't worry about that. You crack on and I, I know you're going to be successful and, and if you Come with our next series with a bigger deal. I'm sure we'll invest. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, well, see you then. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, no deal. No. no that's, that's a shame. Cool. I'm really sorry. <laughs> that's okay. What feedback did the angels give you? Um, they suggested maybe come back next year with a bigger project. Okay. A bigger margin to give them bigger profit, sort of. What we're trying to do is, is obviously get Olivia onto the ladder. So the deal we presented was, was 
maybe a bit Mickey Mouse for those guys. <laughs> right, maybe. And um, we came away with some good advice, though, in okay. terms of how to possibly to make the deal work in a, in a better way. Yeah. Um, maybe we should have been a bit more aggressive with our figures. <laughs> um, okay. We didn't want to uh, not deliver on something, and so yeah. so but there's, there's still options. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe that was, a, was an error on our part, but. Um, we got some good advice and um, if we do pursue this ourselves they've given us some really good tips to try and make uh, make it work in a better fashion yeah brilliant well best of luck Thank with you. it you'll have to let us know how you get on and Thanks if it goes you. through right. and um, yeah you're more than welcome back <laughs> onto the next series as the angels <laughs> yeah. have said <laughs> Matthew, welcome to Property Elevator. Hello, thank you for having Where me. Where have you come from today? I come from Essex today. Okay, not too far then. Not too far, no. no. Our driver was always right. And are you full time in property or I tell am, us what you do? Yes, I just did a degree in real estate, left that, and now I'm full time in construction. Very nice. Yep. I said, so tell us a little bit about the deal that you're bringing to the Angels today. So it's a bit complicated, mm -hmm. taking some plan of permission, going to try to improve it, get an extra house on there and then build it out and sell it on. Okay, nice. And what numbers are you looking for? Um, I'll be looking for 315000 yep. um, as a 50% investment for the whole deal. Great. Well, best of luck. Thank you very much. And I'll have a little chat to you when you finish. Appreciate it. Lovely. Cheers. Matthew's coming in now and uh, a bit of advice I'd give Matthew even before he's come in is that uh, giving us information handouts um, prior to uh, him walking in would have been better. Um, certainly no cash flows, no nothing. Helen certainly won't be uh, very happy. Um, obviously, it's a, presume it's a building plot um, and he's presumably going to try and get planning on it and get us to fund it. So, shall we get him in? Matthew, Hello. welcome. Thank you for coming today Thanks to see for us. Me. Uh, could you please tell us something about yourself? My name is Matthew P. I see you've got my, my uh, photo on the TV there. Um, it is, so we're going to take some planning permissions, plan permission for one new build house. And it's got, we're going to try and upgrade it um, and try and get a pair of detached properties. We're going to try and get one property and then build two properties. We're going to do this by trying to purchase. I believe the neighbour is willing to sell part of her garden so we can extend the plot, bring the houses back, get two houses on there, and then we'd be building two houses okay. instead of one. Okay. And where is um, this? It's in Chelmsford in Essex. Ah, near me. That's not yes. John's back garden, is it? That could be fortunate, <laughs> couldn't it? I mean, it might be John's back garden. <laughs> if it is, he'll give it to you can for we buy it for £30,000, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but um, numbers wise, um, the the land I'm hoping to buy for two hundred and five thousand, and then I mean all in cost, you know, there's all planning fees, there's a seal payment, all of that all builds up. So the total, including the land, would be six hundred and thirty thousand, um, and then GDV of eight hundred thousand. At the moment, you've got planning for one house. Yes. Okay, and what's the square footage of that house? That you're um, to build at it's, the I mean, roughly I'm, more in square meters, 108 square meters. Square meters. Um, you're making me sound old, Matthew. 108 square meters. Right, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So I'm a little bit confused. So, so at the moment, it's got planning for one detached house. Yep. That's what it's got. But yep. you're looking to add some more garden to it. Yep. In order to get another another dwelling. Exactly. Okay. So let's go on what. Let's just go on what you can do, definitely do, because yep. the rest is a bonus. Yep. So what you can definitely do now is building, you can definitely build one house and um, the value of that house when built is? 450 to 500,000. If I couldn't get the plan of permission, the improved plan of permission, I'd, that's like my safety net. I would do that on my own. And then if I can improve the plan in, I bring you guys in, if That's good of you. Thank you. And do the right. larger deal. Tell us a bit about yourself. So I've done mm, a few refurbishments before. Um, I actually just completed on a new build today. <laughs> My first new build I actually completed this morning. Great. <laughs> um, so I've done one new build, a few refurbishments. I've helped out on extensions. So I've 
got a varied amount of yeah. experience and what, in construction. And what's your background? I do this full time. You do? I, I, right. I did a degree in real estate. Where did, you get, where did you get the cash from to do your first deal? Uh, it's all through family business. So um, That's the best place to get it. And then, and then we, I built up, I've done, I've profited on some developments and it's increased. increased. Bank of mum and dad is always a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they say. So the 27, 27% return on investment, explain that to me. You mean return on cost? Ret return on cost, right. yes. So okay. it's not a percentage of No, GDP. your return on GDP is 21%, right? What I invest and then my return on my money that I've invested or the whole 630 that we'd invest would get a 27% return on it. Return on the cost, but yes. your return on your GDP is 21%. Yes. Right, okay. And why do you think you can get planning permission where they, they haven't done before? The, I mean, they don't own the garden. The, the person who owns the site is it's designed for his dad um, and he was going to build out for his dad, but he's come under ill health and hasn't decided to build near. I drove past it, knocked on his door. He said it was right timing Good and he'd be willing okay. to sell it. So he lives in the neighbouring property. He does. This is his About Jason where I'm Land. standing, taking yeah. photos, his house is right behind me. Perfect. Is the purchase price the 205,000 purchase price? Is that including the extra bit of land? No. That's land, just the existing plot. I'm hoping to pay 30,000 for it. I, I've, had, I've heard that I might be able to buy it for 30 odd thousand. But you're paying for the, the plot for one property is 200 odd 205 and, I believe and what's your and what's your um, how much a square meter I should say not square foot square meter is your bill cost so I mean previous total. I, on this project I'm going to try and do 1500 a square meter but I would be project managing it myself that figure you've given me is that because you've you've done other projects for that, that yeah that, it's that based same, on yeah, it's based, based on, on previous project. experience okay, yeah, yeah. Good. so what's the total bill cost 300,000 and then we've got a 30,000 contingency on top of that. Yeah. And the resale is? 400 per property. But that's been, because obviously, you know, the times with the pandemic, I think the properties could be worth 425, maybe 450 a but push. But how many, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused. So you're buying, so, so the, the, the site at the moment that's got, that's got planning yep. is 205,000 pounds. Yep. You're building one house on it at the yep. moment, which is costing you three hundred thousand pounds. I think that was the cost of the two. That's the cost of the two. Sorry, the the cost. I've I haven't really thought too much about the single house because if I wouldn't get the investment to do the two houses, you won't buy. I it. Probably wouldn't be that interested in doing the houses. Either. Gotcha. I've done the numbers on it, so if I if I were to buy, and it, it only work, it work. What you're saying only works if you can, if you can pay the other thirty thousand and do the two. There'd be a small profit in it. I'd, I'd make. 40, 50, 60,000 on the house. Nothing, and no, I mean, not worth doing. Worth okay. It, if it all right. fell through, I it understand now. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah. I understand. I think that was my confusion where the, uh, what's, on, what's the permission is on the table that you can actually build. What you're saying is you haven't bought it yet, you will buy it conditional on you securing, basically doing a bit of site assembly. Yeah, is that basically yeah, what you, what put it all, try and put about. together a better deal. Yep, excellent. Okay. Yep. Essentially, okay. yes, okay. exactly. So that's why we're talking about the two houses as opposed to one because it won't happen with one N no i mean i I'd, I'd have the money to do it myself as well so okay. I, i'd just do that if it came to it it's i wouldn't have the money to build the two houses so the additional garden plot is to the side so it affects yeah. the front and that's the and that's 30 grand that's it's on the right of that photo and then you can see the roads on the left so it would be garden space but it allowed me to to put two in deep in the houses and build yeah. build two I'm going to put in half 315,000 315, okay. 315,000 and I have spoken to a planning consultant and she's happy with and are you putting that in as cash yes first off love the ambition um, there's not many people that go straight into property development out of university you're yeah. knocking on doors to find deals <laughs> you know yeah. you're doing the right things yeah. so you're an impre impressive young guy um, and that's always a good thing. People want to work with impressive people. So, so you said you've got, you spoke with the planning consultant. It looks like, you, is, it, is it three houses or, or two? I'm just building two, your investment, okay. two houses. Okay, so it's, it's one or two rather than one plus two. It's probably worth giving us all a pack before you present. I, yes, yes. Because yes. then it would be very clear to us all. Yeah, and it's okay. taken us a little while to get clear on what okay, the deal actually okay, is. Okay, okay. No, um, <laughs> so just a bit of feedback for next time.
because aside from that, it, it, it seems to, to work. So you, you're wanting 315,000 from an investor and it would be 50% of the cash each. And I would be looking ideally for a 70-30 split in my favour. You're brave, aren't you? Yes. I mean, <laughs> half the money and I'd be, I'd be project managing the, the build. Yeah. So if that I don't work, think you come in here, I don't personally think you should come in here and, uh, and, and uh, be as ballsy as you've been, Matthew. Okay, I understand. But that's interesting. I'm interested uh, on the topic of finance here, why you need to fund it all with cash. Why couldn't we, uh, is there as an option for us to come in with our experience uh, and fund this for you using development and land finance for which your money would go far enough? Could we come on as the experienced investor with much less cash, if we can use all well, how we, finance. How why, why are you not using finance yourself? Because I, th I believe you could finance this yourself. But, but Nicholas, how we fund the deal is really up to us. I know, but I'm more interested why um, Matthew can't fund this are himself. Are we interested why? The reality I, I want is to know why he's yeah, here. No, why, why are you here? I'd love, I'd love to get more experience and have a part okay, so you want the experience, project, not necessarily the cash. As well, I mean, I could go to a bank and they just give me the money and that would be that. Exactly. With 315,000 in cash, you can easily fund this deal with a, a London development loan. A bank wouldn't be as helpful as one of you. Uh, I, I, I would suppose. Especially one that lives near you. <laughs> exactly. Especially <laughs> someone that's nearer your age as well. Well, um, like myself. Possibly. <laughs> I think that's pushing it, Nicholas, to be honest with you. A fatherly figure is what you need, Matthew. The total resales of the two houses will be how much? 800. 800k. And what's right. your comparables for that? There's a few semi detaches on the street that were sold for 455, one sold for 496. So, like I said, I tried to pull back the valuation because of the pandemic. Right, I'm going to jump in and make you an offer. Brilliant, thank you. My offer is, I'll put up the other half and I'll give you, we'll go straight 50-50. Okay. okay. So you thank put you. up your money first. Yep. I then put up my money, be it bank funding or not, but I'll pay my own interest on that money. What return would that be in terms of how, the profit split? The profit's going to be about 200 grand, isn't it? Yeah, 170. But so we get 100, yeah. Mark. So we get 78, so we get 90k each, don't we, at the end? Okay, 85. 50, 50. Okay. How much is it? 85. Thank you very much. So that's, the, that's an offer. Okay, thank you very much. It's all right. I think based on your proposal of a 70 30 split, you know, that's a 51k return on 315 grand at 16%. Yeah. I, I, for me, that's not enough okay, um, okay. for what it is. Yep. You know, you, you could. Um, you, you, I'd be wanting a bit more than that, and I think I think John's offer is fair. He understands the area better than I do, and I think he'd probably be a better partner than I would be on this project. So okay. now he doesn't often say that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. So um, thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I think John's offer is better than what I could offer you. I won't be making an offer either. I'm, I'm with Paul that a 16% return, kind of on what you're offering. That's uh, what you're offering as a JV. Yeah. So okay. the security on that is, I mean, assuming you'd, you'd set up a a company together, so your security on that is shares. 16% isn't appropriate return for shares. 16% is more like a second charge security. Yeah, okay. So for me, that, that doesn't work. Even on John's numbers, it's 27% return for an equity share. Still doesn't work for me, so okay. thank you and okay. good luck. Thank you, cheers. I, th I think that those, those, those two guys are missing a trick. Jo John's, John spotted the opportunity, and the opportunity, despite what John says, is funding it through a bank and us coming in and putting none of our own money in and being your expert partner. And then it's infinite return. It's not 16% return. You're highly investable. I don't fancy investing up in Essex. It's a little bit too far for me. And John would be a better partner for you on this deal. But I think you're great and I think you would make a great partnership together. Um, I won't be investing for that reason today, but good luck. Appreciate that. Thank you. Same applies for me. I think you're very investable. It's not really my type of deal, uh, but I agree with Nicholas. Um, I would fund it in a very, very similar way if, if it was my area. I think you've got a great partner in, uh, yeah. in John. And uh, I guess, as John said earlier, uh, you need a sort of father figure. So I guess it's what they call <laughs> banker mum and dad in a, That's rude. In a property <laughs> elevation <laughs> kind of way. So well, you've got one offer. What do you want to do? Take the one offer then. Fantastic, you. Matthew. Well done. Very well wise. Matthew, congratulations. Yep, we have well. a deal. We have a deal, yes. Who went with the deal in the end? John Howard in the end. Excellent work. Yep. Are you happy? I am happy, yeah. It's yes. worth walking away with something. Absolutely, yeah. So what are the next steps? 
Well, I mean, he said he's going to meet me at the site tomorrow, maybe. So, Brilliant. Um, so it's straight on it. So it's straight on it and get to work. It's been an intense day here at Property Elevator with more deals happening and a lot of happy developers. Unfortunately, not everyone went away with what they wanted, but they did leave with some invaluable feedback from our angels. I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you've been watching Property Elevator. <laughs>